Hi, I am Alessio Mancinelli and today we are going to learn how to solve a regression problem. Specifically, we are going to predict the future price of Bitcoin. Before we start, I have to make a disclaimer. Take this code as an example of a regression problem. Do not use the results you get for any economic speculation. I am not an expert and I do not take any responsibility for what you will do with this code. Again, this is not an investing advice. The first step is to get the data that we will use during this analysis. We will use Yahoo Finance. More specifically, you need to go to this link, which is Bitcoin to US dollar, and then go to historical data. You need to get the maximum value of all the rows and then click apply. Then you need to download this file and BTC to US dollar will be used inside our code. For writing the code this time, we will use Google Colab. The first step is to drag and drop the file that we previously have downloaded inside the file section of the, the site. Now, when this is done, you, we, we can start using the file. We import all the libraries that are necessary for the development of this code. The first library is Pandas, which will be used to manage the data as a data frame. Then we import NumPy, which will be used to transform the data into NumPy arrays. We then have Matplotlib and Seaborn, which will be used to draw the plots. We then import the method train test split from the library sklearn, and this method will be used to divide the training and the testing data. Linear regression, SVR, and the neural network from Keras will be used as models to predict the price of Bitcoin. We execute the cell with the import of all the libraries, and then we need to create another cell in which we will open the dataset. In this cell, we uh, read the CSV that we have downloaded and import it into Google Colab. And we, we, we are doing this by using the method read CSV uh, from the Pandas library. Then we sort the value by the date and we print the data frames. So when we execute the cell, we can see, of course, the data frame. In of this, that this data frame have uh, a lot of column. The first column is the date, and the next column is the opening value of the Bitcoin for the given day. Then we find the maximum value reached, the minimum value reached, and the value in which it closed that particular day, and other information. For our analysis, we will use only the close value for a particular day. The next step is to visualize this data. So we will use the matplotlib library. The first thing to do is to call the method plot uh, of the data frame. And in the x axis, we will need to use the date values. And in the epsilon on the epsilon axis, we will use the close value as we have previously, pre previously said. The title of this graph will be Bitcoin price over time, the X label will be date, the Epsilon label will be close priced, and then we show, we actually show this graph. So when we execute the cell, we get, of course, the Bitcoin price over time. We will now use a particular method to construct our data. This method is called shift and is applied to a data frame. To better understand how it works, let's, let's take an example. First, we define an example data frame, like this one, and then we call the shift method by two rows. If we execute again this cell, we can see that um, the last two rows of this data frame are now not a number because all the rows have shift, has shifted by two rows. For example, now 
previously the values 3, 4 and 5 on the column 0 were on 2, 3 and 4 index and now the index of this row is 0, 1, 2 because of course they are shifted backwards. Of course we can also get the remaining element because they will be used as values never seen by the model. So um, with this syntax we get the uh, deleted values. Now that we have understand how the shift method uh, work, let's completely comment this um, cell, otherwise we will have uh, errors later. Having called the data frame the F, like the one in the previous cells. Let's now prepare uh, the data for the, for the splitting between training and test set. Let's shift the rows of uh, this uh, data frame called DF by 100 position and let's save this value in a new column called prediction. As you can see, when we execute this uh, cell, the last 100 line are now not a number. Then let's build the training data using the close column and all the rows except the shifted ones. The data to be, predict to, to be predicted will be precisely those inside the column name, uh, the named column prediction, except as always the shifted rows. Once this is done, and of course we can execute this, uh, this cell, we use the training test split method, assigning the 80% of the data to the training set and the 20% uh, of the data to the test set. Let's now apply the models we have previously imported, starting with the linear regression model. First of all, we define the model and then we call the fit method passing the training set. We then get the confidence level of the model, which is in this case is 0 0.68, which is not so bad. We then test the model using as values never seen by the model, those we have eliminated during the shift method. Let's now build a plot using both the future values to be predicted and those actually predicted by the model. So when we execute this cell, we get that on the red line, or the red line represents the real price in a given time frame, which while the blue one represents the value predict, actually predicted by the model. As you can see, our model is not very accurate. In fact, in fact, it always provides a lower price than the real one. So now let's change our model. Let's now use another model called support vector regression offered by SQLearn li library. In this case, we will use two different implementation of uh, this model. The first uses an RBF kernel, while the second a poly kernel. In this case, we could also use the grid search to get the best values of these parameters, but for time reasons, we will skip this step. As always, we define the model, we train them using the test set, and then we are going to plot this, uh, this result. As we can see, um, we get worse worse performance than the uh, linear regressor. The last model we are going to use is a neural network model. This, uh, the model will be, uh, will be built by using the Keras library and will be a sequential model. The first layer of our model will be a fully connected, so will be a dense using 128 neurons inside. The input dimension, of course, will be the shape of the training set. And the activation function will be the rectifier linear unit. We then define the next uh, free hidden layer using 256 neurons. And then our output layer will be um, a single layer with just one 
neuron and our activation function in, the, in this case will be linear. We then compile the model and fit the model using our train, training set. Um, we, wanted to, we want to do 50 epochs and uh, with a batch size of 32 and our validation split will be 0.2. So when we execute this cell, we can get we can see that our model is getting fitted. So uh, when our 50 epochs uh, ends, let's wait for them. Our model will be of course fitted. So now if we we uh, we get the future values and we get the we predict our future values when we plot the result of course our uh, neural network performs a little better than the uh, previously uh, defined models of course you can reuse this code to predict the future values of any crypto cryptocurrency or financial index I thank you for watching. If you, uh, if you enjoy the video, leave a like and subscribe.